Hey y'all, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a look back at the Light L16. As the name hints at, this is a camera with 16 lenses on the front. Pretty crazy, and in many ways we can think of it as a camera of the future that failed. Development started back in 2015 when smartphones really only had one main camera on the back, but these days, borrowing a similar philosophy, many flagship devices now have an ever-growing number of camera sensors, whether it's for telephoto, wide angle, macro, black and white, depth, so on and so forth. So this was a concept that I think was really taken to the extreme by light in the L16. They even collaborated with Nokia on the 9 PureView smartphone that had five camera lenses on the back. The promise was by combining all of these different camera lenses, it was able to stitch using computational photography one higher resolution image. One of the challenges though was ultimately this was still using a smartphone sized camera sensor for each of those 16 lenses. So it also meant that compared to a traditional say DSLR, performance in low light was just unfortunately not very strong and required many years of development before it finally hit the market at a pretty high cost of $2,000 when it was new. And that really put it into the territory of professional DSLR grade competition, but unfortunately the results just weren't quite up to snuff, at least in the original firmware that the camera shipped with. Powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 820 processor, along with a large 5-inch touchscreen display. With that being said, Android-powered cameras are also nothing new. We have seen other manufacturers, from Samsung to Nikon, all experiment with this prior to the Light L16's debut. Although, of course, the difference was that these cameras still had a traditional single sensor which could optically zoom. Now, these days, the L16 can still be found new on both Amazon and eBay, often selling for around $200, which is definitely a big reduction in cost compared to the original MRSP. Yet another challenge was as light shut down, so did their servers, meaning that a lot of the newer units are still stuck on an earlier version of the firmware. In the two to three years that the L16 was being actively sold, the company did come out with a series of OTA updates, which unlocked functions like video recording, as well as using on-camera editing, and all of that resulted in slightly better performance compared to when the L16 was first released. For the first time earlier here in 2023, community members on XDA have been able to compile a version of the latest firmware and have uploaded it into GitHub, providing also some directions for new customers to manually upgrade their camera. Uh, regardless, coming back to some of the final specs here, there was a 4,120 milliamp hour capacity battery which was rated for around 400 shots before you had to recharge it again, which was decent. It also offered functionality like bokeh, which you could manually adjust. But again, these features are now pretty common even on regular smartphones that we have with us. And part of the higher expense was also attributed to a desktop software that the company developed called Lumen. This is a software that can also be found now in the GitHub repository, but allows you to unlock additional editing functionality very similar to something like Adobe's Lightroom. Now, another benefit of this particular camera system, just like on our smartphones, is there is a telephoto function without optically zooming out, so it can still remain relatively slim. There are 28mm, 70mm, and 150mm camera modules uh, comprising of the 16 lenses that we see there that switches between them when you are zooming in and out. So just like on our iPhones today, it's sharpest when you're going between, say, one times to five times rather than something like 4.2 times. One final spec here is they have designed a custom, what they call Lux capacitor chipset for processing some of the images on here. That's kind of similar to what Pixel phones in fact have, which is a dedicated camera processing chip in addition to the regular Snapdragon Qualcomm chip. So anyways, the packaging here was definitely done in a very, I would say, well-presented manner. And the inside here has another box that says light. You can also see what is included uh, when it was new and the additional camera modules, again, at those three fixed focal lengths. 256 gigs of built-in storage, which was pretty good back in the day, although this camera does not take a built-in SD card. So this is all you get. You have to then free up space if you run out afterwards. Interestingly, it has also GPS for geotag. Bluetooth, just like on any Android smartphone, although it is using a dual-tone LED flash as opposed to a xenon flash, which is also a little bit 
I would say unusual choice for a dedicated camera. Xenon flashes tend to be a lot brighter and what we typically expect in more of a pro-grade camera rather than LEDs, more energy efficient but also found on our phones, so that was also a slightly more questionable design trait. First impressions would be that this is a much larger camera than what most folks might expect looking at just the, again, 5-inch screen size and thinking, well, that's going to be smaller than our modern day phones, but that is actually incorrect because of the so many camera sensors that they have stacked on here to try and not overlap them. It just takes up more surface area. This is a concept, again, taken to the extreme. So you end up with a body which is actually not too far off from a 6.8 inch uh, phone, which is pretty large by 2023 standards, not to mention that it is substantially thicker. In fact, it's even larger than the older Samsung Galaxy camera, uh, which also has a 5-inch display. At the very least, it does manage to be slightly slimmer when you are comparing it at the thickest point since it doesn't have a protruding optical zoom lens, which is good. So there's less moving parts, easier to kind of wipe off the surface, which is coated in just a layer of glass. Now taking a closer look at the L16's hardware and design, you can see immediately it starts to kind of shimmer because of all the folded optics and mirrors in there uh, that are definitely quite eye-catching. And what is a little bit scary is the lenses will still move a little bit as it's trying to get itself in focus. So there's a slight degree of horror in having up to 16 pairs of eyes basically moving and looking at you. I think it's pretty cool, but I can also understand some folks that think it's a little bit of a, I would say, scary design. And all of the 16 lenses are also labeled and tell you the focal length that it's shooting at. On the very top of the camera, you have just that two-stage camera shutter key, tap once to focus, all the way in to capture the shot. The ring around it is also going to glow when it's being charged, for instance, there's a dedicated power key. The entire thing is definitely constructed well, as expected for such an expensive camera. It's made out of this single block of aluminum with some soft touch rubber accents for extra grip and it feels very solid and substantial. On the bottom of the camera there's access to a standard tripod mount, Type-C for charging, and it's quite fast. It takes just under two hours to fully top up this battery inside. There's also a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and yes there are built-in microphones and speakers that can play back audio. Also a lanyard strap located there on the side, and that's pretty much it. One thing that you can notice here is that there is no detachable battery compartment, which is also unfortunate, especially on a pro-grade camera. On the back of the camera, we do have the aforementioned speaker. There's kind of a dimple for easily putting your hands on and shooting with. It's relatively comfortable in terms of this soft touch grip area, although because of the many different kind of patterns here, it also attracts dust and lint a little bit more easily. Located on the very top is also what was supposed to be a capacitive sensor for zoom controls that also never materialized. In fact, that was one of their roadmap extra features that was supposed to come over a software update, but luckily there is an easy software way of zooming. You can flick up and down to quickly jump between the 35, 75, and 150 just like that, as well as hold and fold up and down to slide into some of the digital zoom options. And you can see that on this particular version of the firmware, uh, which is Second to last, it did unlock the capability for you to access the full Android experience, very similar to a smartphone, where you're able to take a look at additional utility tools, although some of the earlier firmwares actually blocked the ability for you to download third-party applications uh, to enhance the security. However, the last firmware update did unlock this capability, meaning that you could also download apps like, say, Facebook, in addition to maybe Twitter, if you wanted to more quickly share the images you've taken onto social media. And say what you will, the components that they've used on here are clearly quite premium for the time, including a very good haptic vibration sensor, especially for a camera. Everything in terms of when you're typing just feels super precise and tight, although it's questionable why you would want to use this for web browsing, since the entire package here with that added bumper really takes you to a weight which is just slightly under one pound, so a lot heavier than a normal smartphone, but at least in terms of the functionality, yes, you can see it works, and the Snapdragon 820, although definitely dated by today's standards, it's not bad, especially on a simple camera. Things are still quite responsive when it comes to navigating around the UI. Some final things here before we dive into the camera 
kind of software part would be some proprietary wallpapers that you received showing off some vibrant kind of colors that the panel was capable of producing. So now jumping into the camera user interface, uh, one of the other slight cons here is because it is powered by Android. Just like on a smartphone, it requires almost 30 seconds to turn on from a cold boot. This was the Coolpix S800C. They were very smart because while the Android OS experience was booting, they gave you access to a quick launch camera mode. So you can tap on the power key and instantly begin snapping away images immediately as Android booted in the background. And that meant less waiting if you had to capture something at a moment's notice. Now, one of the messages that you kind of are seeing right now is the lens blocked message. And that's because since there are so many lenses on here, you have to be a little bit more deliberate about how you're holding the camera. It's not too bad, still feels comfortable enough, but if you are kind of blocking the edges, you'll sometimes see that message pop up. But it is relatively quick to snap an image. And this is the part where I think they are quite clever because they gave you actually a preview version of the image Image, which is smaller in terms of file size. And that means if you want to fully edit this particular image, you can actually tap on that icon and it will then process the entire full 52 megapixel shot, usually taking a couple more seconds before it will snap into focus. So for example, changing the exposure, contrast, color temperature, vibrance, saturation, sharpness of the image can all be adjusted. For instance, if we tap on exposure, we can again use the slider here on the side to make the image significantly significantly brighter or dimmer, and you get that histogram view at the top as well to see how you're doing in terms of if you're losing too much information. In this particular mode, now that we have the full 52 megapixel image, we can now crop in a lot and be able to see tiny fine details. You can then tap on the bottom section here to change between, instead of auto mode, going into the more manual controls. So ISO, for instance, will increase the time that is basically exposing the shots and it will let in more light. For instance, if you're shooting in darker environments, it makes a difference, but it takes longer for a shot to be captured. Shutter priority will prioritize quickly snapping a shot. For instance, if you're watching a sports game, and then there is a beta video mode as well, which is capturing actually at full HD 1080p resolution, even though the box and the website once advertised 4K, that was something that was never released either. Additional modes that you have adjustable options on would be the kind of exposure level, which you can also tap on. You can even turn off autofocus and manually focus on subjects yourself. Uh, things like that, as well as burst shot modes can all be played around with, but those are pretty typical functionalities that you would find on most cameras. So here's the Lumen desktop software. Once you plug in the camera, pictures will automatically load and you're able to then select them to import into your computer. Afterwards, they'll show up in your gallery and you can then further process and edit them. So for example, let's click on an image like this. We can then see it load up here. What you will notice is that the process of loading pack images it is not the fastest in the world. Just because these photos are so huge in terms of, again, having over 52 megapixels, and then by default, they're saved in this Lumen file format, similar to raw photos, and you can tell that these images, when unedited can take upwards of almost 200 megabytes for a single photo. Five or six images will take up close to one gigabyte of space in the full resolution editing mode. So make sure you have plenty of disk space and it also makes sense then while why opening as well as importing the photos can take a moment or two for them to finish. Focus on different objects just by tapping on them. So the process is just a little bit on the sluggish side unless you really have an ultra responsive computer, which is perhaps also why uh, the ratings weren't extremely positive when this thing was new. By default, things are a little bit on the muted and slightly more realistic side, but let's say you're used to the higher saturation that is found on pixels and iPhones, you can crank this up using that lever and all of a sudden you're able to inject a lot more color into the shots as you can see there. Once you're satisfied though, you can then export it now as a, let's say, JPEG onto your computer and this will now take up only about three megabytes of space. What I will say is, again, the overall quality of the images that you're able to achieve when it comes to just the detail is definitely impressive, but it's also not quite as dead simple as on a mobile photography, for example, it still is a little bit more advanced, giving you a bit more control over what you're doing. 
Just a few final samples before we go. Using the Lumen software, you are able to get some pretty beautiful effects, I have to admit, as long as you have a bit of patience when you are playing around with your photos. Perhaps the only thing that I just wish would be if they were able to somehow just make the kind of Lumen files a little bit smaller, so it would be a lot easier, I think, to work with on all types of computers, even less powerful ones. So that's more or less it as far as a visited look at the Light L16 camera. The idea of packing more lenses into a compact system is definitely one that is clever and has its uses, especially in smartphone, mobile photography as we know it today. So that concept in itself was ahead of its time, although ultimately it's unfortunate that this failed primarily, I think, in terms of pricing as well as marketing. For 2023, though, at a dramatically reduced price point, I won't argue that it is a pretty fun gadget if you are a photography nerd and want to play around with something like this. You can check out additional details if you are interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been a look back at the Light L16.